Hey YouTube, I uh, decided I wanted to do a quick little walk around on the ground station I just finished. Uh, I did this because if you've been watching my videos, you know I'm pushing for a little bit longer range and I've used an antenna tracker for 5.8 gigahertz video and I got out to about three and a half miles, which was pretty cool, but there's more to be had, I know. So I moved to a 1.3 gigahertz video system. I haven't had a chance to fly yet. I just got the ground station set up for it. And uh, I thought I'd do a quick little walk around on, on the uh, ground station that I built for this. So first off, I did the uh, bi-quad, the IB Crazy bi-quad. Um, pretty simple build. There wasn't much to it. I haven't tried it yet, so I guess the proof will be in the pudding. We'll see if uh, I can get it to work. And um, right off the bat, I see a little error i got to work on. Now, this is just a tilt or a pan setup. It's not a tilt setup. Um, I think the... Biquad has enough of a horizontal beam width, excuse me, a vertical beam width, where I won't have to worry about um, whether or not the device tilts. I think I'll get away with just a pan on this one. Um, and I can adjust it. That's part of the reason I set it up with a wire, so I can make a manual adjustment if I want to as I get to cruising altitude and speed. Here's a quick look at the back. I used a lot of wire loom and tried to keep everything as neat and tidy as I could. That is the... Eagle Tree, Eagle Eyes Antenna Tracker. And then I used the Servo City Pan Module. I went to that because I've tried all kinds of different setups and I've never been happy with anything. I finally just decided to get something that was a little more industrial strength, so I went with the Servo City unit. And that thing actually works pretty good. It's pretty quiet, um, it holds its position pretty well. I used a quarter inch birch plywood. I used Racewood 1.3 gigahertz. Uh, video receivers. I have just a standard Omni on the back for close-in stuff and the Biquad, of course, uh, for the distance. And then those are both hooked up to diversity on the Eagle Tree Eagle Eyes. I added a USB port uh, charging socket so in between flights while I'm down I can charge the run cam or uh, any, any other device that I need to for that matter, including my cell phone. And then underneath I've got a field view 7-inch monitor from Hobby King and I've got the Get FPV, Get FPV DVR, and I've got a simple little watt meter uh, plugged in. And then inside, uh, there's the wiring inside with the, uh, uh, you'll be able to see that with the uh, amperage shunt and a 5,000 milliamp pack. And on this side, there's a little switch to turn the DVR on and off. And then for the cover, I just put a little magnet, magnetic hatch in. This isn't load bearing, it's really just to cover up the wires a little bit and make it look a little nicer. So that's just a little load bearing or a beauty cover. So to turn it on, I just flip that little toggle switch and hit the record button and then the monitor. Uh, just hit, I don't know why, but it, it doesn't power on um, to on screen. So you have to hit the power button to make it come on. And since I don't have any airplanes plugged in, sending telemetry to the eagle eyes it's not doing anything but it does pan and tilt in fact I'll take a pause here and hook up a servo tester so you can see the pan so there will be the zero point on the well, that I'll set up when I calibrate the eagle tree for this setup and then there's a counterclockwise to 180 and this will be clockwise to 180 and then back to zero. I really, let me mute this real quick. I really wanted um, to find a way to run these cables through the center and do a center fed setup, but the uh, Servo City, there is one uh, pan module that does that, but and it has a hole in the center, that would have been ideal. Uh, but they were always out of stock on that thing for some reason, I don't, I don't know why. Um, but I couldn't get my hands on that one, so because of that I had to stick with a shaft mount um, tray and just run the wires along the outside. I, I did it as neat as I could, and from previous pan and tilts, I learned that you really got to have a clear lower surface. That's why this thing is up so high. I, I wanted to make sure I had plenty of space for this cable to articulate, and it does a pretty good job. It seems to clear the, the base just fine. It's very much about antenna place or wire placement when you do these, though. I've learned that. And real quick, on the bottom, um, on the plywood, I took some 
aluminum uh, 90 degree channel and cut 45s in it and basically picture frame the bottom just to give support. I didn't want that plywood tray to sag. And then up top, that's just where the, uh, the Servo City shaft comes out and this tray is just screwed right into the what they call a clamping hub. And then the receivers are just screwed into the wood tray. And then up front, I've got a little stop for the antenna. That's this guy. I just took a little piece of uh, um, square, square dowel rod and kind of cut little edges off and screwed it in there just to keep the front settled. And then I used 90 degree brackets to hold the, uh, the pan and tilt to the monitor stand. I painted the inside uh, flat black because of video. You, you wanted to, I want to try and isolate the video. And I painted the outside a matte white because I live in Arizona. It gets very hot and I wanted to try and reject as much heat as I could. So that's why the outside is, is matte white. Anyway, oh, one other quick thing. On the bottom, I struggled with this for a long time too. I had a buddy of mine who has a machine shop. He made that for me. That's a big, it's like a quarter inch steel disc with a bolt welded to it. And that bolt was big enough to fit right inside the, the shaft of the tripod. So my first try at an antenna tracker, uh, with using the plastic pan and tilt that came with it, the whole thing was really wobbly. And I kind of complained about it. And my buddy said, hey, I can, I can do something about that. So he made me one of those. That's how I did it. And the, the entire unit, again, trying to work on rigidity and structural rigidity, I took a piece of hardwood uh, from the... Home, you know, Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever, and uh, cut that to fit. So the entire thing rests on this on this piece of hardwood, and that's about, I guess it's about four inches by uh, maybe three eighths of an inch. Um, so everything bolts to that. The TV or the monitor uh, bolts to that. I just made a little square box and used angle brackets and and um, screwed the TV to the to the that box. Um, the the housing for the pan and tilt or the uh, monitor it, it rests on this hardwood and it's got angle iron brackets holding it on there um, here's the back where the screws go into the monitor you can see there's four screws here those go into the monitor and then everything is zip tied and loomed the best the best I could I'm just trying to keep it neat and tidy um, definitely with antenna trackers if the wires aren't neat and tidy you're gonna have problems so well, that's it. I just wanted to do a in-depth. I've seen a lot of videos with antenna trackers, and every time I see them, I'm like, "Wow, that's pretty cool." That I wish I knew how to do that, or how do you do that? <laughs> so, I this one looks like it's going to work pretty well. I'm pretty happy with the outcome. Um, we'll see what happens when I go fly with it. But in the meanwhile, I figured I'd kind of walk around and show how I did it, and and maybe that'll give you some ideas on how to do your own uh, uh, base station. Oh, one last thing. I do have a 25 milliwatt, 5.8 gigahertz uh, transmitter that's sitting right here. So that's this guy. That's the only thing left really to do. Um, all I need to do is put this on one of the outputs on the Eagle Eyes and mount it and give it power. And uh, I'll work on that here pretty soon. But once I get that done, I'll. Uh, uh, this will work as a relay as well, so I won't have to plug wires, any, any wires into the unit. I'll just be able to uh, use it as a relay. So that's the last, the very last thing that I need to do, but it's really not required to be functional for flying. Okay, this is about the end of the video, and next I've got some static images of the build progress. So you can see, you know, the various phases of the build for this video. Um, hope you enjoy it, and if it's been beneficial to you at all, please hit the like and subscribe button so other people will be able to find this material. Okay? Thank you.